We consider our ideal quantum gas as consisting of massive particles. So massless particles would be photons or phonons, but here we just consider particles which have a mass. The Hamiltonian of a system consisting of massive particles is just the sum of the kinetic energy over the, of the particles. So if we have n particles, the j is one runs from one to n, where n is the number of particles. And we have a Hamiltonian, which is simply p squared j over 2m. And because we are working in the framework of statistical mechanics in the grand canonical ensemble, we should look at the states available to these particles. And that is described by the solutions of the one particle Hamiltonian. And here are these solutions. They are plane waves and they are characterized by a wave factor k. And for a volume, let's say, which is cubic L by L by L, we know that the k's have the form two pi over L. And then there are integer indices, nx, ny, and nz. And that implies that if we sum over the k vectors that we can always replace that by a v which is the l to the third over 2 pi to the power 3 and then integrate over the 3k directions and now uh, if we would consider this that would mean that the particles do not have spin so perhaps we should also, in the case of fermions or bo spin bosons, we should sum also over the spin directions of the particles. But I will leave that out for this uh, movie, and it's easy to add it in at the end. In terms of the quantum numbers k, the energy can be written as h squared k squared over 2m, as usual. In a previous movie, we have seen that the average occupation of a level is given by the Fermi Dirac or the Bose-Einstein distribution. And that depends on whether the particles are fermions or bosons. And here is that distribution. It's one over e to the power beta epsilon k minus mu and then plus or minus one, where the plus sign corresponds to fermions and the minus sign to bosons. So this enables us to calculate the, the total number of particles in the system. That is called n, and it's just the sum over k of this nk. Replacing now the sum over k by the integral with the v over 2 pi to the third, as usual, and then putting in the explicit expression for the uh, expectation value nk, the occupation, we get this integral, which tells us how many particles I can find in a volume V and at a temperature T. And the temperature enters through this parameter beta, which as usual is defined as one over KBT. The next step is then to streamline this integral by introducing a new integration variable, which is called X. And we define x such that in the exponent here, the first term just has the form x squared. And that leads to the following straightforward formula. Uh, we divide left and right hand side by v. And um, then we have a lambda, which is the thermal wavelength h over 2 by mkbt, which comes out of the transformation. And this is the result, which is a rather clean integral. And we see that there is only one physical parameter left, and that's the beta mu. And that makes sense because the density should depend on mu, on the chemical potential. Now we could stop there and say, OK, we have the formula. But it's interesting to look at the, the limit where the energy of the particles is high. And uh, then the system approaches the classical limit. And the reason is that if you consider the discrete quantum states in the system, uh, if the temperature is high, the average occupation will be low. 
and so there will be very few so if i think of fermions there will be very few particles per uh, level usually less than one and so i don't see the fermi statistics in that case and the similar argument uh, applies to the boson case so high energy means you are in the classical limit and it's interesting to see which corrections you get to the classical limit from the quantum uh, character of the system. Working this out boils down to an exercise in Taylor expansion and in this case the limit x squared being high means that this number the first term in the uh, in the quotient is much larger than the plus or minus one and so we can expand uh, in terms of the one over this term and if you do that it's a straightforward exercise and it leads to the following formula so you have n over v is lambda to, uh, to times lambda to the third that's the same as the density n over v is little n that's the density in the system times lambda cubed that's one over pi three halves and then here is the expansion in the uh, of the numerator and in the integral the integrals are always running from zero to infinity and so we anticipate that the first term uh, should be the classical result and then this is the first quantum correction and if you work it out um, you see that this integral leads to e to the power beta mu plus one over two in the power three halves and then e to the power two beta mu so you see that this leads to an expansion in terms of e to the power beta mu so e to the power beta mu tells you to what extent the, uh, the control is the parameter which controls the amount of quantum character in the system and indeed it's a straightforward exercise to check that n over v times lambda to the third equals e to the power beta mu is just the classical result for the ideal gas in the grand canonical ensemble the expressions for evaluating the grand canonical partition function are given here they were derived before in a previous movie we have two cases for fermions we have this expression with a plus sign and for bosons we have the inverse and with a minus sign and for bosons there is an extra condition that uh, the mu should always be smaller than the uh, epsilon k otherwise this product will never converge combining these prescription for the equation of state with these formulas for calculating the grand canonical potential we find that p over kbt is 1 over v ln z grand now the ln z grand is a product over k so that will turn into a sum over the k's and i can transform the sum over the k's into an integral and the prefactor then has an extra factor of v which cancels against this v and moreover what i've done here is i have uh, replaced the integral over k by an integral over x this variable x is the same as we have introduced before it uh, just aims at uh, simplifying the epsilon k in the integral it will just be uh, an x squared and the, of course the transformation from k to x also changes a little bit the prefactor and it brings out this factor of lambda to the third lambda being the thermal wavelength evaluating the integral is easier said than done and so as we are in the classical limit where the x is large the main contributions to the integral come from the large x we can do a taylor expansion in this term e to the power minus x squared which is small and if we perform that for the logarithm we get these two terms well the first term has this minus plus sign and the second one has a minus sign and we should not forget of course this overall plus or minus sign which comes from the fact that in fermions uh, i have just the product and in bosons i have the inverse which gives the minus sign and then we arrive at this straightforward expression after we perform the integrals p over kbt and then we get one over lambda to the third e to the power beta mu and this would be completely the classical result so it would be a nice exercise to just state the classical 
grant canonical partition function and then show that this is the classical equation of state. But we see that there is an additional term and that additional term must be due to the quantum uh, effect. So it's a quantum correction term that uh, induces extra terms in the equation of state. Well, equation of state, this is not really the equation of state in the form we would like it to have because we would like to express P and T in terms of the density N and V and not in terms of the chemical potential. So how can we do that? Well, we have just seen how we can find an expression for the density in terms also of this factor e to the power beta mu. And so combining these two, we aim at eliminating the mu from the problem and then expressing p and kt in terms of this density. Now, because we do everything in terms of expansions, we aim at finding an expansion of p over kt in terms of the density. So the simplest, uh, the first two terms in, a, in an expansion would be n, because we see that to first order in beta mu, these terms are exactly the same. P over kBT is just the density, and that's the classical equation of state. And then we add a term a times n squared. Now this uh, second term should uh, take care, it should, it should yield this term in fact. And that gives us a pre prescription for finding this a. So from the first term, we already have a term which contains an e to the power beta mu, and that's this term here. And then if we add a times this term squared, it should give us the result over here. And that condition is represented here in this equation, which immediately gives us a, and we can write up the final result. The a is found as lambda to the third, one over two, five halves, with a plus or minus in front. And if we put it into this uh, prescription, it directly gives us this. Uh, so we see that p is the classical one, and then we have plus and the minus sign. Now, it's obvious that if the pressure is higher than the classical pressure, we are dealing with fermions because the fermions want to stay apart from each other. They want to stay away from each other. And so that increases the pressure of a gas. The bosons have no problem in being uh, close together. And this, the counting prescriptions for bosonic statistics make that the pressure gets a bit smaller. So the minus sign corresponds to the bosons and the plus signs to the fermions. Now it's important to note that I've made another movie on the um, Bose-Einstein condensation and there I will use the same uh, notation with the x etc as I've done in this movie and so this movie is important to watch before you carry on to look into Bose-Einstein condensation.